So we've completed the preparation part of this build. The next stage is to configure the pipeline and the pipeline will control the execution of the job on the agent and then be responsible for pulling back the test results into a test run record within Azure DevOps so that we can report on that test run. So to set that up then, in Azure DevOps, we want to go to the pipeline section and we want to configure a new pipeline. Now, typically a pipeline will be configured as part of a YAML file, but for the purpose of this demo, let's use the classic GUI editor so that we can drag and drop the components we need into our pipeline. So the first part is to tell this pipeline where the code is. So we've already saved our code in the Azure repos Git repository. So we select the source, then the project. So we're in the same project, then the repository, and then the branch where we need to pull that code from. Now we'll start with an empty job and we just need to pull three tasks into this job. And the way this is structured is that we have the pipeline. We've already defined the get sources part of the pipeline to get the code for our test complete project. And this pipeline is then constructed with one or more agent jobs. We just need one job within our pipeline and we need to add the steps to that job. We'll call our job first off TM demo test complete. It's using agents that we have created. So these are our private agents that were created in our default pool. So if you remember under our project settings, we created our agent pools and we had a default pool and in there we created our agent which was running on our local machine and if you remember we started and ran that agent under a PowerShell script from the agent utility by running that run.command statement on the PowerShell script. So that gives us our agent and we've configured that agent now by selecting the agent pool as default which contains that agent so it should run on that agent. So next then we need to add the first step to this part of the pipeline or the job and the first step we want to create if we click on plus we can then search for and we need to search for the visual studio test platform installer. Now you may install this manually on your agent, but if it's not installed, then you can force the pipeline to install it every time it runs. So it doesn't hurt to have this in there. But that's the first step to install the Visual Studio test platform installer, which will manage and maintain and run our test complete project. The next bit then is we need to add the test complete test adapter. You may need to install this if it's not already installed in your Azure DevOps instance. As this is already installed, all I need to do is select the add part to this and I've got the test complete test adapter installer now as one step in my job. And the final step we need then is the Visual Studio test, test assemblies step. And this is responsible for collating the test results and pushing them back to Azure DevOps when we run them. So we've added the three steps. We just need to configure these now. So the first one, click on the Visual Studio test platform installer and we need to configure this step. So it will get the package for, as an official NuGet package will install the latest release. So we can stick with the defaults on that first test step. Second one then, this is the all important test complete execution and this we need to configure correctly. So the first thing we need to do is set this to use the 
correct test runner. So I'm going to use test execute, which is installed on here. You can get it to install test execute or test complete if you need to or update it. You'll then need the access key. So this is the licensing component of test complete. So you'll need to go to your SmartBear licensing account, manage.smartbear.com, log in, and then in this section under your user account, you will find an access key. And you can copy that access key. And that needs to be pasted into that section of the step. Next then, we need to search for test cases to run. We can do that either from the project items or from the execution plan. I want to select the execution plan so that it will select from the execution plan within the project. And in terms of logs, I want to record all logs for all of the test steps, regardless of whether they pass or fail. And the rest of the settings in here, um, you can tweak as required. So you could disable this temporarily if you want to, continue on error. So if anything fails, we want to continue on to the next step. And you can retry timeout, which I would recommend setting. In here, you can set this in terms of the minutes for the execution. So if the job hangs, for example, you may want to uh, get it to automatically time out and complete this step. So finally then, we just got the test assembly. So this is responsible for capturing the test results and sending them back to Azure DevOps. And what we need to set in here are a number of things. First off, that's the display name. Don't need to worry about that too much, but we need to make sure we do select the tests via the test assemblies. And we need to make sure we pick up the right test files. And this is the project suite from test complete, the name of the project suite. So if you go to your project and you'll see the project suite there, you can right click on this, show in Explorer. And from here, you can grab the project suite name and you need the extension, the PJS extension, and you can paste that in here. So the double star means search for this project suite file, at any part of the hierarchy on the agent, and then search in the folder for the working directory in the agent and capture the test results from that, from that working directory on the agent as well. The other important aspect here is the test filter criteria. So at the moment, this won't run anything because we need to specify whether we want to run the project suite, the project or individual tests. And the format we can use for this, if you just want to run a project is project equals and then the name of your project. So the name of my project in test complete was web orders ADO. If you want to run project suites or individual tests within a project, then you can click on the more information and you can get the naming convention for that. So the rest of the settings then, the one important one to change is the test platform version. And this, we need to pick up the installed by tool installer. So for the test platform, it'll make sure it uses the version of the test platform that's installed as part of this pipeline. And that should be it in terms of our pipeline configuration. We can save that pipeline and select the folder where it's going to be saved along with a comment. I'm going to save the pipeline YAML file in the root folder. And then when we're ready, we can either queue it directly from here, or if we look at our pipelines, and we look at the list of pipelines, I can see down here my demo test complete, and I can run that pipeline. So when I run it, asks me to confirm the agent pool. So that was the pool where we configured our agent machine, and we want to pull the code out of the main branch, and Click on Run, and Azure DevOps will 
contact the agent machine, which is listening for the jobs, and it should run the test execute application with our project that's stored in the Azure DevOps Git repository. And you can see the agents now picked up the job and that should trigger the run of test execute, which will then download the project from the Git repository. And we see if we go back to Azure DevOps that we can come in here and we look at the execution and all the stages that it goes through for each part of the job. So the checkout, Visual Studio test platform installer, test complete, adapter installer, and then the test assemblies, and then it should trigger the test execute execution. And we can see test execute, start the browser, complete the test steps, which include logging into this web orders demo app, creating one order, and then logging out. And the final step then in the pipeline is for the Visual Studio test assembly step to capture the logs, pull those back to Azure DevOps, and then we can look at the test run and the reports that are created. So we can see here that the test results are pulled back as part of the final steps in that job. So if we go back to the, the run here, and then go to the test plans area, we should be able to look at the, the runs, and we should see in here this latest test run. And you can see here, this was run under my TM demo test complete. It was run 21. And if we drill into that, we'll get to see the test results. Those test results include seven test items. So remember from our test project, so there's seven test items and all seven of those passed. And when we look at those test runs, we can drill into test results to see each of the test items from our test complete and test execute execution. So now that we have that pipeline defined, to actually get that pipeline to run the tests and update the test results in the plan, we need to include it as part of a release. So under the release section in the pipelines, we need to pull together a release that includes that pipeline. So if you look at one I've created previously, what I've done is create a pipeline within a release that has the testing jobs, which has three tasks. And those tasks are, again, to install the Visual Studio test platform, test complete adapter with the access key, and Visual Studio test component. And those three tasks within the pipeline for the release we build need to come after the artifacts that are needed for that pipeline job. And those artifacts are the Git repository, where we get all of the tests complete project artifacts from for the run and then include the pipeline that we've previously defined so the tm demo test complete pipeline that i've pulled in from tm demo project tm demo test complete pipeline default source is the latest and those two artifacts can then feed in to this release process that has the three tasks to run the jobs. And it's then the execution of that release pipeline that will run the tests on the client machine and then update the test results. So if we drill into this release that I've already created and run, you'll see that the testing was successful. And if I go back to the releases, and that release that I've just run that included that pipeline. I can look at the analytics to see the pass rate over a period of number of releases. 
and I can view the full report there with a trend of all of the test results across the various releases that executed that pipeline. And if I go into the test plans, what I should be able to see under my test suite now is that all of the test results have been updated in that test plan where the test cases in test complete were linked based on the test case ID. So just to recap on that overall process then, two stages to this, there's the preparation stage where you create the repository to contain your test complete project. You bind test complete to Azure DevOps, you link the tests so that there's a mapping of test items in test complete to test cases in Azure DevOps. Then you need to set up your agent and your agent machine so that it's linked to your Azure DevOps instance. And once all of that preparation is complete, we can configure the pipeline. And one pipeline may consist of many jobs, but we configure one test automation job that contains three test steps. And when we run that pipeline job, it allocates it to run on the agent machine. And after that has run test execute, that pipeline will pick up the test results and feed them back to Azure DevOps where we can report on the execution progress and test status.